Let's finally talk about this Return of the Joker flashback scene. So I've been debating on reviewing the whole movie Batman Beyond Return of the Joker on the channel because as some of you may know, I absolutely adore this movie. I never shut the fuck up about it when it's brought up. Which is why I decided to make a separate video on the flashback scene because I know if I do not cover this before I cover the actual movie, I'll probably talk about this scene for like 15 minutes in the review and everyone will hate me for it. Seriously though guys, you've probably heard me gush about this scene in the past, so I'm going to try to keep this brief, quick, and just touch on key moments in the scene and why I think this scene is so damn good. Of course, when I've touched on it before though, I haven't spoiled anything because I think anyone that hasn't seen this movie absolutely should. I'm going to be spoiling the scene, so if you haven't seen this movie, get out of here, go watch it, please. So the flashback scene is highly regarded as the best sequence in the entire film, which I agree with. I think the entire movie is excellent, but this flashback scene is perfect. Perfection. It's so emotional, so impactful, so important. And yes, I'm willing to admit that this is probably nostalgia for me. But this is my favorite Batman scene of all time. Yes, of all time, not just in animation. I prefer this over the interrogation scene in The Dark Knight. I prefer this over the Batman Begins ending, which I think are great scenes as well. But instead of me continuing to gush and explain why I like this scene so much and what I like it more than, let's go ahead and get into the scene. What happens? Why is this scene so important? What makes it so good? So first of all, I find it very interesting and enjoy the fact that Barbara is narrating all this to Terry because Terry doesn't know what happened. Terry doesn't know what happened with the Joker. He doesn't understand what could have been so bad that Bruce would never want to speak about it again. And the entire movie is really leading to this revelation. It really builds up. What happened? How did the Joker die? So Tim Drake is obviously an important component when it comes to this scene and the story of what happened that night. What pushed Batman away from everyone? What happened to the Joker? And what the Joker did to Tim, what he put him through, is so sadistic. This shows how truly sadistic the Joker is in a way that no Batman the Animated Series episode ever did. So of course the Joker's main motivation as a character is he wants to break Batman. He doesn't want to kill Batman because if he were to kill Batman, he wants it to be the perfect death. And he can't really get the perfect death, which is something that's a sport in Batman the Animated Series. But if everything went to plan, Batman would have died that night and not the Joker. And I think the Joker would have been satisfied with that. I think he would have been satisfied with everything he put Tim through, which in turn is what he put Batman through because he's only torturing Robin to get to Batman. So of course what Joker did to Tim is transform him. He transformed him from Robin, from just this young kid into his quote unquote son. He essentially transformed him into a monster. He even shows Batman how it was done, what he did, what he put Tim through, how he broke his mind. That is pure evil. He pushed Tim so far, broke him so much, that he revealed all of Batman's secrets to him. The Joker got Batman's closest ally to reveal his true identity to his arch enemy. All of this is major stuff. And I couldn't imagine anything like this being done with any other character other than Joker. It's just so dark, so twisted, and so sadistic. What the Joker did to Tim is much worse than killing him in my opinion, and I think that's why the Joker took that route. He knew that killing Tim would be too easy. He knew that Batman could just go find another Robin, and that eventually the burden of Tim maybe would leave him, or at least he'd have something to distract himself from it. But for the Joker to do this, first of all, Tim was missing for like three weeks, so Batman was going through that pain and agony of not being able to find essentially his kid. For the Joker to do this, it truly broke Batman a little. And then, at the end of the flashback when the Joker has Batman, he hands Tim the gun. The same gun you see at the beginning of the movie. He tells Tim to kill Batman, and Tim has the gun pointed at Bruce. He pulls the trigger, the flag comes out, and you just hear Bruce just so emotionally, he sounds so broken, he just simply says, Tim. That is so heartbreaking. For a moment, Tim Drake, he was so broken, so weak, 
that he was going to kill the man that took him in and trained him to become what he wanted to be. But after Batman says that, it's like a flip was switched just momentarily in his brain. He's been laughing this entire time because of he's Joker Jr. basically. Laughing the entire time, he laughed when he pulled the gun on Batman. After he hears that, he turns points the gun at the Joker, pulls the trigger again, the flag comes out, and that's how the Joker died. And then Tim's laughter slowly transitions into sobbing. He is crying, he is broken, and it's just such an emotional and impactful scene. Even in death, the Joker won. The Joker broke Batman. He broke up the Bat family. After this, Batman never went on a mission with anyone else until Terry came into his life all those years later. So that as the answer to the question that everyone wanted answered by the time Batman Beyond came around, what happened to the Joker? This is an extremely good response to that. This is, it's basically their final Joker story. I mean, you can say the movie is because, you know, Joker comes back, but this flashback scene was the last of the real Joker because it's Tim Drake later on. It's still technically the Joker, but you, you get what I'm saying. This scene is so emotional, so impactful, so important, so heartbreaking. It's just so damn good. So I've touched on the main points I wanted to touch on, just what I overall think are the most important things that happen in this flashback, why it's so damn good, why it's so important, why it's so important to the characters of Batman, the Joker, and Tim Drake. But there's a couple more things I just want to touch on real quick because I think they're good moments in the flashback. I don't think this flashback has a bad moment, but at the beginning when Barbara has the Nightwing reference, I like that referencing Nightwing. This flashback really had everything. Nightwing, Barbara, Batman, Tim Drake, Joker, Harley. And speaking of Harley, Batgirl vs. Harley, that was pretty entertaining. Joker's hideout is Old Arkham, which is um, interesting and it makes sense because Arkham was relocated. And just a couple more interesting things about the scene is that, of course, this was brought up by Terry and Epilogue later on through the DCAU and Justice League Unlimited. And when the Joker stabs Batman in the leg, the writers and producers, creators of the show were implying that that's why Batman now has a limp, which is very interesting. The dialogue and acting in this scene is just perfection. It's absolutely amazing. Some of the best voice acting I have ever seen and will ever see. Just a lot of emotion had to be shown in this scene, and it was done to perfection. The actors gave it their all. The writing was great as well. And of course, as I touched on earlier, this event had after effects that lasted for a long time. Batman didn't work with anyone from that moment forward until Terry coincidentally came into his life, discovered he was Batman, and even then Bruce didn't want to work with him. He only worked with him because he felt for Terry. He wanted Terry to get vengeance for his father. So I'm done gushing about that now. I just think it's, I think it's the best Batman scene ever. So emotional, perfectly acted. Everything about the scene is great. So let me know what you think about the scene down in the comments below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. And kind of like the kid who peeks at his Christmas presents, I must admit, it's sadly anticlimactic. Behind all the sturm and batarangs, you're just a little boy in a play suit crying for mommy and daddy.